السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته فرنس مور فرنس هابي فرنس هابير فرنس It's it's my great pleasure uh, to be here with you today and to kick off the season of what works. Um, and I think we picked up the happiness to be the fairest and the most important topic for what works. We're here to talk a little bit about this, this big buzzword at the moment, which is well-being. Um, and it's probably a word that you've come across before. I was actually in Spinney's last night and saw a big poster for a wellness, well-being mother and toddler coffee morning. Um, no problem. So, you know, it's, whether it's something you talk about in your daily working life or perhaps even in your personal life, this is certainly something that is on the tip of everyone's tongues. You can tell them that they can come along to staff training. And again, I've got colleagues in the room who have been trained by these tech gurus. And they are brilliant. Because it might sound really silly, but they're far more patient than I feel like I am. They are patient, they enjoy educating adults, they really, really want to be there. No matter how much you want to be there, they want to be there ten times more. And they enjoy doing that. No one with a child going home and saying to mom, I've been a great thinker, they need to know exactly how they've been a great thinker. So the certificate needs to say specifically why they have demonstrated that particular trait. Okay, it's no good saying good, well done, excellent, pure affirmation. It needs to be exactly why they've got it. So long as you that child, why they have it, then that's... So this is fairly typical of what you see in your average newspaper or when you watch CNN, BBC, Fox News or whatever. It's always wars, hijacking, uh, border attacks, financial recession, economy is doing badly, unemployment, uh, um, hijackings, rapes, murders. It's just the same, same old news. How does this impact the thinking of our children? Which generally designers use. When they come up with a, with a UX design or a you know, website or whatever, they come up with each pain point. What is the user going through? And we are trying to incorporate that into different industries. We are trying to incorporate that in an education institution. Is it possible to do that with students that you are interacting with? Can we do that journey path for them to see where they are coming, how are they feeling at every level? Can we create something nice for them? It's really about courage and resolve, a strength of character. It goes beyond just that opportunity to pick yourself up after one event or one heartbreak. But it's about having a vision, knowing what you want to achieve in life, and following your path from A to B, no matter how many obstacles um, come in your way, how many challenges or problems, but knowing that if you achieve that goal, it will make life better for you, yourself, your family. to bring us really in the mood, yeah? So let's dance a little bit. And stretch. As educators at Learners, I think that we all want to respond to our students and what they want, because ultimately they're our stakeholders, they're the ones who listen to us. We need to respond to them, otherwise we're not doing a good job. But how do you get students to tell you things? And how do you get them to tell you things that are true? If you ask a student, oh, how did you enjoy my lesson today? They're almost definitely going to say yes. Our core values are bilingualism, excellence, sustainability and togetherness. And we believe that those four values, everything has to connect back to them. Um, and so that's what we try to stick to. And mindfulness means paying attention in a particular way, on purpose, in the present moment, and non-judgmentally, okay? So we needed to find a way that we could present this to the children to help them understand, so that we could create a mindful school culture. But at the end of the day, it's about our ability to regulate ourselves. So how well do we delay gratification? How well can we resist those short-term temptations to achieve a long-term goal? How well do our students do this? For educators, 
educators, we usually start chatting about our students' well-being. But actually, we think that it's also really important to address staff well-being because our children really feed on the, the whole uh, the atmosphere in the school. They learn much more from watching them te their teachers than just listening to a lesson. The whole purpose of this, uh, this event that is uh, being brought together today and has been for a few years around what works is, um, is a great example of what can be done in the area of governance as it is in every other part of education, which is to bring school heads and school uh, governance organizations together uh, to share best practices and share how their experiences uh, at their school uh, can provide an example to others. We carry huge responsibility as educators. We hold pliable lives in our hands, either to make or to break. Being inherently happy as an educator will affect the climate in our classrooms and, conse and consequently the learning of students. What can we do to achieve this state and is it even possible in our stress-filled teaching environments? I've come to a frightening conclusion that I am the decisive element in my classroom. It's my personal approach that creates the climate, it's my daily mood that makes the weather. As a teacher I possess a tremendous power to make a child's life miserable or joyous. I can be a tool of torture or an instrument of inspiration. I can humiliate or heal. In all situations, it's my response that decides whether a crisis will be escalated or de-escalated and a child humanised or dehumanised. Now, for SE and I think this quote applies very aptly. If a child cannot learn in the way we teach, we must teach in a way the child can learn. This is very true of SE because they need different learning styles which normally are not accommodated in the regular classroom and that's why they miss have some gaps in phonics or comprehension. There's a small movement of him moving backwards on the y-axis and there's a very long movement happening in the z-axis which is him jumping, gaining some air time to do the rotation. Now if, if Robert wants to do it again and you can actually place the somersault in the axis. The one-to-one -one ABA therapy is not just about the child and this is where it is different than sending a child to a um, facility outside of school and then receiving them back into school once they've had their therapy. What the Small Steps team do is work with the parents and with our staff to train them as well. Rather than saying, if only I could get that job, I'd be much happier. If only I could earn more money, I'd be much happier. If I'm a student, if only I could get a better grade, I'd be much happier. Let's turn it the other way around. Let's say, think about what makes us happy first, and then you know as a result of that, we'll achieve more. Okay, this is what our children believe messy play is. It's anything that involves squishing, squidging, rolling, pinching, squeezing, ringing, dabbing, dotting, feeling, and many more descriptions from our children there. Now, for me, messy play is anything that involves the teacher being creative um, in inspiring, enticing, and extending children's play so they don't actually realise they're learning. Um, all I can do is give you a few, a few pointers. But one thing I will say, and that is that to me, um, a, a good school is one that makes good progress with its pupils, not just one that gets very good exam results. Fish in the sea, you know how I feel. River running free, you know how I feel. Blossom on a tree, you know how I feel. It's a new dawn, it's a new day, it's a new life for me. And I'm feeling good. The children are our future. And with this in mind, I looked at them first for guidance and inspiration in development of our happiness and positivity identity. We launched a campaign inviting kids from all schools to answer a simple question by submitting a drawing on how do you see happiness and positivity. 
It was overwhelming to receive their submission, and it was also refreshing to observe so many common themes and so much alignment. The result of this effort produced the national logo for happiness and positivity. The crowdsourcing approach used to create this logo was uniquely collaborative. But at a deeper level, it also reflects the meaning and simple elements of happiness. Mostly when we say happiness, the priority goes to the emotional balance of it. If a child is emotionally happy, the child gets the best out of his school. And a child which, who comes from a background or comes from a situation where he is not emotionally happy, it is difficult to be productive inside the classroom. So we are healthy makes for happy. So a healthy body and a healthy mind leads to happiness. And as we've seen in the video, we have taken a lot of trouble over the last seven years at PRA to ensure that our students are eating in a healthy way. From the age six to twelve, the role of the peer, the role of the peer is way more important than the role of the parents. So at this time, I'm sure that his Kareem's friend's words count more than mine. I know that. Kareem's friend's decisions and opinions are kind of like untouchable and very precious, even more than his mom's words. We have to understand that. So they were selected for their unique ideas, for the, for the vision they have for the future of the world. And then they are here with us today uh, to work on those challenges. For example, with KHDA, the challenge we have is to prototype 21st century assessment systems and personalized learning solutions that work across curriculums to offer five times greater flexibility, two times lower cost, and 10 times better learning outcomes. So these parents, they started coming in, they started helping us paint the walls. Actually, they painted the wall, they transformed the entire space. And then children, nobody, it, we did not make it compulsory for every child, but whichever child, whoever, whosoever wanted to, bring, brought a, sorry, brought a plant each, and then they themselves labeled it, and they kept it in the garden. We go into classroom, when we say, oh, you're so clever, and that person, gets cleverer and cleverer and delivers. And we may not acknowledge another child in the same way. And that also sets up the child for failure. And I can see that you do recognize this. But sometimes there are children who surprise us. Um, and there is so much about happiness that's not really clear to people. Often, people think that happiness or I should say success, is what drives happiness. But that is so not the case. Those of us that are here, we're very successful. And let's think about how that works. Yes, maths and English and geography is important. Yes, learning language is important. But you know, the most important thing is well-being. And let's value that first, because parents around the world value it. Teachers around the world value it, well-being first. So why don't schools put, put well-being first? And schools that are putting well-being at the heart of education around the world, we're seeing some incredible results.